We don't know what's going to happen this year, and that's what we're going to debate early on here on the show today. Who can tell what's going to happen? Whatever happens, it's going to be different. And it's going to be different even if all restrictions are lifted. We don't know what's going to happen until after December the 2nd. If the if we go back to normal December the 2nd, or as near normal as we can be, and we have no idea whether there'll be a 10pm curfew on the pubs or not, if we go back to normal and then there's a spike 10 days later, the politicians and the scientists will get together and they will try and impose another lockdown. You can tell it's going to happen because they haven't got any other tactic. Even the World Health Organization have said they don't think lockdowns work, but it seems to be the only weapon we have against COVID-19. And you can bet your life if there's a sudden spike after society opens up again, it will go down again. Now, uh, what I would propose is this, that if that happens... If the government suddenly turn around and say, oh, look, I'm sorry, but, you know, we tried the second lockdown. It didn't work. We're, we're so dumb. We haven't got any more ideas. We're going to try a third lockdown. I'd say scrap Christmas. I would honestly say scrap Christmas. What is the point of going into a half-hearted Christmas where you can, might only be able to mix with three or four people, where you can't actually get the essence and the spirit of Christmas? You can't get the spirituality of Christmas. You probably won't even be able to go to church on Christmas Day. Don't you love the Christmas carol service at midnight on Christmas Eve? I do. For years, I used to go to Chester Cathedral and join in. I must admit, I'd visited a pub or two before that. But nevertheless, it was a spiritual need for me as a Christian, because I'm a Christian and we're a Christian country, to get to church sometime over Christmas. OK, the yo-yoing politicians could easily rub that out. And if they do, then I say... Or even if they say you're going to pay a 25 day penalty in January, it's not worth it. It's not worth five days of Christmas for a 25 day penalty in January. And it's not worth a Christmas if it's so badly restric restricted that a lot of people can't travel to a lot of places in this country. Scrap Christmas this year. And you know what we do? We move forward. Hopefully the vaccine comes over the horizon, over the hill. And uh, like the Eighth Army rescues us from the penury they're in at the moment. And then we say, do you know what? We're going to change it this year. We're going to scrap Christmas, forget it. We don't need it. And we're going to make Easter the national celebration, the national spiritual celebration, the celebration of all things that we believe in. We're going to make it at Easter. And then we take a long bank holiday Easter and we turn what was Christmas into the Easter celebration. Nothing wrong with that, because, of course, they're both linked to exactly the same subject, that subject being our faith. Well, you're a Christian, obviously. Some other faiths in this country have sadly had to forego their celebrations over the last week or two because of lockdown. I say it's something we should probably think about doing all together and just forget it, OK? Uh, now, um, the magic vaccine may or may not arrive in the new year, but if it does, does that mean that we're galloping into the new year, new horizon, back in Valhalla, OK? And then we can all get going, OK? I, I still don't understand where we are. Nobody does. Um, on Monday, we may be told that there's some more... Positive decisions coming in, for instance, the uh, quarantine of 14 days for people travelling on airlines may be reduced to five. We don't know yet, but that's something that's coming up. But the main issue here is what happens on December the 2nd. Now, if you look at the figures which have come out over the last 36 or 48 hours, they are encouraging. It means that actually we are now seeing a slowdown. You know, slow down of infections, slow down of people going to hospitals. Hospitals are not getting overwhelmed. They're not getting full. OK, you're going to say, well, yes, that's obvious because we've had a lockdown. But I've been studying the figures and the figures were going down even before the latest lockdown was introduced. I want to say once again, I personally don't believe lockdowns work. If they didn't work the first time. Why have we tried it a second time? And if it doesn't work this time, wouldn't it be the height of madness and stupidity to introduce the third one. I still think we have to introduce an element of um, uh, self-reliance, an element of self-isolation, an element of self-shielding, and an element of saying to everybody, use common sense, think for yourself, stand on your own two feet, and if you are sensible and people around you are sensible, we shouldn't have a problem. You know, one of my biggest bugbears, as you all know, is the closing down of the pubs. Ridiculous decision. Fewer people um, contracted 
or yes, I'm sorry, it's contract uh, COVID-19 in pubs than almost anywhere else in this country. More people caught it in their homes than caught it in the pubs. More people caught it in public transport than caught it in the pubs. The pubs are very safe. That's the first thing we've got to get back and open because A, it's good for mental health. B, it's a national institution, which we'll talk again uh, about a bit later in the show. But C, it's good for people's mental health to be able to get out. Don't you think lockdown is horrible? Absolutely horrible. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. And uh, that drives people pretty much mad. Restaurants and pubs need to get open and then not be closed down again before we get to Christmas. OK, if we uh, if, if that happened, we'd be in trouble. So you've got the theme now, folks. The theme is this. I'm saying that if the government are daft enough to try and impose any more restrictions on us before Christmas, after the lockdown has been opened up again on December the 2nd, my view would be vote for cancelling Christmas, OK? And I'd say that because, frankly, I don't want half a Christmas, don't want quarter of a Christmas. I want a full-blown Christmas when we can do Christmas again to get over the misery of what we've been suffering for the last nine months, OK? Of course, one of the main restrictions we've had to put up with is the closure of our churches, OK? Now, you might say, oh, well, you know, attendance to churches have been dropping off for a number of years. Well, you know, we can debate that. There are other faiths in this country. Um, the Church of England is still, of course, the, the church of this country. Christianity, the Queen, is still head of the Church of England. And it's very, very, very important to tens of millions of people. I myself, am a, I follow a Christian way of life. Now, that doesn't mean to say I necessarily get to church every Sunday morning, because I don't. I can't always. I work here sometimes on a Sunday, and it's very difficult to combine the two together. But I lead my life along what I, de- what I would describe as Christian values, OK? I lead my life in a way where I have self-respect, for myself, and I have respect for people around me, my neighbours, people I work with. And what I try to do is treat others as they would treat you, along the lines of what I believe are basically the Ten Commandments, OK? Now, in order to be able to do that, and it is by far the majority religion in this country, and as I say, tens of millions of people follow it, you need church leaders. You know, you know we just do, because there's, you know, there's no good having um, a Christian church and Christianity unless we've got the people who can actually teach us what it's all about, 